Hi there folks, welcome back to this, the third video in this Par Game Python project. Uh, building Othello, also known as Reversi. Um, in the last video we built, uh, we built the class, the grid class, we built the actual grid, uh, as well as the actual Othello, the actual Othello game. And including that actual Othello game, we built the actual, the, the grid object. And with the grid object, we actually, um, created the board game, the actual board to the screen using images, um, as well as still having the right click function, which would draw the actual logic grid to the screen, as you can see over here. So what we're going to do in this video is we're going to include, um, we're going to build the, the tokens, the actual object, the token object. Um, so let's get cracking. So what we're going to do, we're going to scroll down to the bottom of our code underneath our what's the class called? This, this is the grid class underneath the grid class we're going to build the token class uh, so the token class is going to take a couple of things excuse me what is this I can't decide if it's blocked or which one it is so what we're going to go with we're going to go with class we're going to declare a new class here called the token and init method init method um, we're going to pass it a couple of arguments we're going to give it the player argument we're going to give it a grid x coordinate we're going to give it a grid y coordinate um, the image as well as we're going to pass it the main uh, object we're going to pass it the object itself direct so we don't have to reference to the actual thing itself or anything like that <coughs> so when we are self dot player is equal to the player self dot grid x will be equal to grid x self dot grid y will be equal to grid y self dot pos x is equal to the 80 offset plus uh, grid y multiplied by 80 uh, self dot pos y will then be equal to 80 plus the grid x Okay, then we're going to self dot game. Game will be equal to game. All right. Then we're also going to include. Um, where is my um, the next attribute self dot image will be equal to uh, image. Okay, and in this class we're going to include a couple of methods. I think the first method we're just going to go ahead with, there's two methods for this class. Uh, we're going to have one method that's going to be called transition. Um, we'll leave it like that for now. We'll just say pass. And then the second method will be the draw method. Draw, and we're going to pass it the screen. Draw screen dot image. All right. So we're going to say in that method window dot lit um, self dot image. And then self dot pos x self dot pos y excuse me okay so that is pretty much a static uh, x and y position coordinate it's not going to move so that's 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 fantastic that's all we need to do there we're going to then come back up to our uh, grid our grid class and in our grid class what we need to do is we still need to insert the two original tokens onto the board. So remember when you saw the demo, there were there was a white token, a black token, a black token, and a white token. Those were the, the, the starting position on the board, was the, the game start position. Um, let's go to our regen grid method. And in our regen grid regen grid method, that's where we're going to insert our new tokens. Oh, before we insert tokens, uh, we need to actually create a method inserting these tokens so underneath our regen grid underneath our print game logic yes underneath our print game logic we're going to define a new method we're going to call it insert game token insert and insert token uh, there we 
now we're going to pass it a couple of uh, arguments. We're going to give it the grid. We're going to give it the current player. We're also going to give it the y and the x. All right. So then in this method, we're going to go with uh, the token image is going to be equal to self dot uh, white token if current player is equal to one else self dot black token okay then we're going to go with uh, self dot tokens oh that's a dictionary we still need to go create this dictionary okay self dot tokens y and x will be the reference in the, the dictionary and that's going to be a will be the current player which is the argument we, we, we need to pass it we need to give it the grid x which will be in this case I know it's confusing it's going to be the y and then the grid y position will actually be the x uh, token image and then self dot game not actually the reason why the y and x swap around the game grid runs on row uh, a nested list right so you've got a you got the rows and then you got inside each row um, how does it work yeah you've got a row and inside each row is a column so when you look at working in terms of grid x and y the grid x is actually um, the row and the grid y is actually the column but however when you're looking at drawing something to the screen the X, which I normally confuse between the two, the X is actually moving as the column position and the Y is actually the row position. So that's why the Y and X over here swap around like that. Okay. Grid X, uh, Y, grid X, maybe equal to self dot tokens, Y comma X dot play. So this is onto the actual grid. We'll be inserting that what player position or player one or player two. So remember, I said we need to come back up to our attributes. We still need to create that self dot tokens uh, dictionary. So underneath my self dot bg, we go with self dot tokens equal to. Right, and then we're going to come down to our regen grid. In our regen grid method, we're going to include four tokens. Self dot insert token. Right, it's going to be grid. It's going to be one for the current player, which will be player one. Uh, it's going to be position of three, three. Right, then it'll be self dot insert token grid negative one three four All right then it'll be self dot insert token again grid one uh, it'll be four four and it'll be self dot insert token so it'll be grid uh, negative one Four, three. Right. Okay. So if we have to now run this, uh, run this code, what we would see is, okay. So no images are on the screen yet. Um, however, you can see here in the middle of my grid, we have one negative one, negative one, one. So that's where my player computer player has already. Um, is now the token is there. Alright, so let me just do stop. Thank you. Okay. So in order to get that to print to the screen, we need to come down to our draw grid method. So in 
our draw grid method, we need to uh, cycle through our self.tokens. So for token in self.tokens, we've got keys. Okay, we want to go through the keys. The keys. Self dot tokens token uh, dot draw. So we pass it all the way. We could do it that way. We could also go with values, and then we could just say token dot. Maybe that's better. But it's a lot easier to. All right, so now if we run this, we should see our tokens on the screen. And wait, 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 wait for it. <laughs> right. Things are looking up so far. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're quickly going to go add a function, a method in our original class, the Artelo class. We're going to add a method to enable us, whenever we click on the grid, it will add a token to the board. Uh, it's going to be fairly simple. Uh, I'm going to leave the very complicated coding stuff for the next video. So I think we should just do this for this video so that we make some progress and we can see what it's going to look like. All right. So we're going to go up to our main Othello class. And in our main Othello class, we're going to add some attributes. I'm going to do it here above the self.rows, but below the, the, the set caption. Okay, so we're going to have a self.player1 attribute. I'm going to give them a value of one. We're going to have a self dot player two attribute, and that value is going to be negative one, right? And then we're going to have a self dot current player player attribute, and that's going to be equal to player one uh, player beginning, right? The next thing we're going to do is we're going to go down to our input method, and in our input method, beneath um, where the event button dot three is selected. So we're gonna say if event dot button is equal to one, meaning the left mouse button. If the left mouse button is clicked, we're then gonna say x, y will be equal to pi game dot mouse dot get pos. Right? And then using those, we're gonna say the x, y will also be equal, therefore actually be equal to x minus 80 scored by the point 80 and then y minus 80 scored by 80 okay and using the x and y we're then going to say um, self dot grid dot insert token Will be self dot grid dot grid logic. That will be the grid that we pass it, and then we'll be passing it the current player, and then we will also be passing it the y and the x. Right. Once that's done, we will then say self dot current player multiplied. Right, if I run this now, I'll have the game grid like normal. If I click, I put a white square, I should now put in a black circle. There's black, there's white, black, white, black. See how it's constantly changing player character. Um, adding all these pieces to the board. If I right click and draw the grid, the game logic, you'll see the game logic matches as well. We have a negative one for the black player, there's the one. Black tile, white tile, white tile, black tile, white tile. Fantastic. I think I'm going to leave this, leave it here on this video. And it's another nice short one. Um, but like I said, we're about to get into some of the, the, let's just say everything up to this point has been fairly easy in regards to this game. And we're going to get to a little bit more complicated in some of the logic for the game now. It is a little bit more complicated. It needs focus. It needs attention. And I think it's best to have a video dedicated to it by itself. Um, if you enjoyed this video, 
If you like what you see, if you want to see more of it, please hit that subscribe button, hit the like button. It really does mean a lot if you guys do that. Comment below if there's any suggestions, hints, tips, tricks, anything else I might not know that could make things better. I'd appreciate it. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Cheers for now.